A chorus versus a refrain. These two terms are often used interchangeably, but are they technically the same thing? And regardless, what is the most productive way to think through a refrain versus thinking through a chorus for us as songwriters? Let's talk about it. So in order to effectively break down the difference between a chorus and a refrain, I think an example can be helpful because sometimes there are words that have sort of a generic categorization meaning, but also mean something fairly specific within that category. And a great example of this would be coffee. So by definition, coffee is simply a hot drink made from the roasted and ground seeds, coffee beans, of a tropical shrub. So this is actually really quite generic of a definition. In fact, if we look at the definition of espresso, espresso is actually a strong black coffee made by forcing steam through ground coffee beans. So by definition, technically all espresso is coffee, but not all coffee is espresso. In fact, most coffee isn't espresso. So it wouldn't be correct to actually use those terms interchangeably, but technically you could call espresso coffee and not be wrong. So ultimately the reason that we're talking about this is it is the same exact relationship between a refrain and a chorus as it is between coffee and espresso. So by definition, a refrain is the line or lines that are repeated in music or in poetry. So technically all choruses are refrains and pretty much all pre-choruses would be refrains and all post-choruses pretty much would also be refrains. But it wouldn't be the case that all refrains are choruses as evidenced by the fact that technically almost every pre-chorus or any post-chorus would also be a refrain. So, should we use the term refrain and chorus interchangeably? I would say the resounding answer is no. Because just like all coffees are not espressos, but all espressos are coffees, it is also true that not all refrains are choruses, but all choruses technically would be under the category of a refrain. But if we actually go back to the definition of a refrain for a second, we can see that actually there are some situations that would qualify as refrains that aren't choruses, aren't pre-choruses, and also aren't post-courses, but are actually a totally separate thing. So this brings us to what usually somebody means when they're referring to a refrain, and also the only situation where something is a refrain and not another section. So it's a refrain and not a pre-chorus, a refrain and not a chorus. So there's no other term for this thing other than a refrain. And that would be at the end or sometimes at the beginning of a verse where you have a line or a group of lines that always repeats in each verse. So a part of what makes this different is if you were to look at a lyric sheet for a song that had this type of traditional refrain, technically it would just be a part of a verse. It wouldn't even have a space between the rest of the verse and this in the way that you would usually put a space or a blank line in between the verse and then the pre-chorus or the verse and the chorus. Ultimately, it really is just lines or a line in your verse that just happens to repeat in each verse. Now, this is something that was traditionally used a lot more than it is used now, but a great example of this would be a song like The Times They Are A-Changin' by Bob Dylan. That song doesn't have a chorus, but it does have a repeated line, and it's The Times They Are A-Changin'. Every single verse ends the exact same way. He'll talk about a bunch of stuff in the verse, but then the last line of the verse is always the times they are a-changing. And ultimately, the effect of this is that it helps make your verses rhyme metaphorically. So what do I mean by rhyme metaphorically? Well, ultimately, if you think about what a rhyme is, really, it's sort of two things that are very similar and almost give the illusion of being the same, but technically are different. So if we take the word light and night, those two words rhyme. Are they the same word? No, but they easily reflect one another in the sense that light and night sound exactly the same except for the first letter. So they are reminiscent of one another and it's easy to make the connection between light and night. Oh, those two things rhyme. In the same way that if you have four verses that ultimately are saying totally different things, but every verse at the end of it say the times they are a-changing, that really helps to bring all the verses together and unite over this one line of everything feels like it leads to the times they are changing because it's a whole bunch of words, the times they are changing, a whole bunch of words, the times they are changing. And repetition is how you show that something is important. So ultimately, you could see a refrain as a great way 
to even without a chorus, still give your song an identity. Because to go back to the times they are changing, you notice the actual title of the song is the line that is the refrain. And usually, also, if you have a song with a chorus, that's usually where the title comes from. Why is that? Because usually the identity of something comes from what is repeated. If you think about it, your artistic identity usually comes from the things that you repeat. So if you have a five song EP, what gives that EP its identity are the things that are similar or repeat across the different songs. If all your songs open with a warm acoustic guitar riff, that is what's going to give your sound identity. That's what makes it your sound or what makes it the sound of that EP. Or if you have a whole EP that's built off of the organ, because you're repeating the sound of the organ across the EP. That's what gives that EP its identity. So identity usually comes from repetition, which often in songs is in the form of the chorus. But sometimes if you have a song that you don't want a chorus or you don't feel you need a chorus, a great replacement for a chorus can be simply to have verses where at the end of each verse, you actually have a refrain where you just have a single line or maybe two lines at the end of each verse that have the exact same lyrics every time. Because if your song has nothing that repeats, sometimes it can be hard to have a real identity to that song because there's nothing that is notable in the sense that it's not repeated to make a point of like, hey, this is important. Hey, this is important. In the same way that if you made an album and every single song is in a totally different genre, nobody would know what to call you genre wise. And you wouldn't really have much of an artistic identity because it would be like, well, I mean, one song was rock, one was rap, one was country. I don't really know what this artist is. But if you have a whole album where nine out of the 10 songs are rock songs, and then maybe the 10th one has a bit of a country vibe, overall, still your identity mostly would be, oh, okay, this is mostly a rock artist. So in the same way, if you have a song where you just have a bunch of lyrics and nothing ever repeats, it would be hard to have a real identity for that song, which also can make naming your song difficult. But a great way to really connect all the pieces of that song, despite not having a repeated chorus or repeated pre-choruses or post-choruses or anything like that, the way you can give your song identity is by having a refrain. So Silent Night would actually be a pretty great example of some different styles of refrains that actually exist in one song. So first is every single verse in Silent Night actually starts with the exact same line. Every single verse or stanza starts with Silent Night, Holy Night. Every single one. So this is a part of what gives that song its identity. In fact, that's exactly where the title of the song comes from, because that is the one part that repeats every single verse. And there is no chorus, which leads us to the part of the song that most closely emulates the idea of a chorus, but still definitely is not a chorus, which is the single line at the end of every verse that happens to actually repeat. So the first verse goes sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. The second verse goes Christ the Savior is born, Christ the Savior is born. And the third one, Jesus Lord at thy birth, which again repeats twice. So in this case, it technically also would be a refrain because it's a line that you then make a point of by actually repeating it again. Also, you can make the argument that all three of these, or at least the second two, certainly carry a very similar theme as well, which leads us into another example of a more hazy form of refrain, kind of like that second refrain example in Silent Night, which would be the song Hallelujah. Now, the song Hallelujah has an actual chorus, which just is Hallelujah repeated over and over again. But also, if you look at the lyrics, at the end of every verse, it always leads to the same idea of somebody saying Hallelujah. So the first verse says the baffled king composing hallelujah. The second verse is and from your lips she drew the hallelujah. The third says no it's a cold and it's a very broken hallelujah. So even though technically the words overall aren't repeating totally, they always end with the word hallelujah before going into the chorus that is a bunch of hallelujahs. So this would be another example of maybe it's not technically a refrain, but it sort of uses the same fundamental idea of a refrain, which is to have some form of identity that is repeated throughout. In this case, every verse is sort of bound together by they all end with the word hallelujah. Now, in this case, the whole line isn't repeated, but every single verse leads to the word hallelujah before going into the entire chorus of hallelujahs. So ultimately, why should we care about a chorus versus a refrain? Well, first of all, I think to be more precise in our speaking, we shouldn't call choruses refrains because the term refrain is really quite a generic term that could mean a whole bunch of things. I think it's more productive to use the term refrain to mean 
a refrain that is not a chorus or a refrain that's not a pre-chorus or post-chorus because ultimately otherwise the term refrain is just so generic it almost loses its meaning and it's really important i think to note that there is this special concept in songwriting that isn't really its own section but is a way to create parallelism between verses and that is ultimately the refrain so ultimately where i think a refrain is most helpful is if you have a song that you really don't think should have a chorus or maybe doesn't have a chorus a great way to still give your song an identity and really give it that at least single line or maybe couple lines that help make the theme of your song very evident is really just to have a refrain. Now, whether you do that in the silent night way where you actually have it at the beginning of every verse or if you do it in more of the times they are a change in way where every verse ends with the line or maybe the third way, which is a more hazy way, like the way Hallelujah has sort of a refrain in the sense that every last line of the verse ends with the word Hallelujah or maybe the way Silent Night has a second type of refrain where there is always a final line in the verse that does repeat itself, but it's not a chorus. All of these things I think can be helpful ways to give an identity to your song and give it that needed repetition without needing to have a chorus. But I think it's also important to note that an effective tool you can use is to have a refrain that is a line at the beginning of your verse or maybe the end of your verse where you always repeat that one line in each verse, but still have a pre-chorus and a chorus and maybe even a post-chorus. Because you can have a refrain within your verses and not make it so that that is the only part of your song that repeats. You can really help draw parallels between each of your verses by simply having a refrain at the end or at the beginning of each one of your verses and still end up having the repetition and the identity you get from repeating in the form of a pre-chorus, a chorus, and maybe even a post course. So ultimately my challenge to you is to go out and write a song that utilizes a refrain and specifically not a refrain that is a pre-chorus or a chorus or a post chorus, but is a single line or maybe a couple lines that maybe at the beginning of each one of your verses, it's always the same line or at the end of one of your verses, it's always the same line. And if you have a song that you have a bunch of verses you really like and you're like, man, I feel like this song just doesn't need a chorus, but also it feels too disjointed without a chorus. Maybe what you need is just to have one line at the beginning of each verse or one line at the end of each verse that always is the same to give your song an identity in the way that the times they are a change in has an identity. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, something else you may find helpful is my free guide on 10 different ways to start writing a song. It gives you five ways from a lyrical standpoint and five ways from a musical standpoint. So whether you like to write lyrics first or music first or you want to try the other version, there are five different different ways for you. And ultimately, the point of this guide is to change up how you start your songs, because often how you start ends up sort of dictating where the song goes. If you start by writing a song at the piano versus starting by writing a melody first versus starting by coming up with a cool song title first, your songs may end up sounding pretty significantly different. But if you keep starting your songs the same way every time. That's how you can sort of get into a creative box and end up getting sort of creatively fried. Because if you just keep picking up that acoustic guitar and starting with a chord progression, eventually your songs may start to sound the same or you'll just go creatively dry. And it can be as simple as just writing a bass line on your acoustic guitar to start a song instead of a chord progression. And that may be the key to get out of your creative rut. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out that free guide. Link in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll talk to you in the next one.